Hi, I'm Kelsey Brennan Wessels, and welcome to this special edition of Earth from Space on the European Space Agency Web TV. From 800 kilometers high, satellites provide us with objective observations consistently over space and time. They can detect changes in land cover, monitor water quality and identify pollutants, evaluate the health of a coral reef, monitor floods, or help assess how coastal zones are influenced by sea level rise. This information can be useful to various groups such as scientists or disaster management authorities and even governments. In recent years, international banks have even started to use Earth observation data, a seemingly unlikely relationship. To find out how and why, I have with me in the studio today Stephen Coulson, the head of industry section here at ESA. Welcome to the show, Stephen. Thank you, Kelsey. Now, Stephen, today we're talking about banks and satellites. They seem like two completely different topics. How are they related? Yes, at first sight it does seem a little odd, but I think what we have to do is get straight uh, which type of banks we're talking about. And here we're not dealing with the usual banks on the high street that you and I do our personal finances with. We're dealing with the major international development banks, and these banks are making large investments in the developing countries to stimulate economic growth and reduce poverty. Examples of these banks include the World Bank, based in Washington DC, the Asian Development Bank, based in Manila, the European Investment Bank, based in Luxembourg, and the list goes on. There's about 10 major players. Now, these uh, efforts to invest in economic growth put a lot of pressures on the environment. So recently, these banks are turning more and more of their attention to achieve this economic growth in an environmentally sustainable manner. Or to put it more simply, it's what's called green growth. Now, green growth isn't just an abstract concept. There are financial approaches being developed to put an economic value on the environment. Examples include the Natural Capital Project, led by Stanford University and the World Wildlife Fund, and recently, the Valuation of Ecosystems initiative launched by the World Bank itself. If you add on top of this the concerns about climate change and climate variability, what you get to is a set of issues that require globally consistent information about the environment. What's happening now? What is, where has this come from? And where will it go in the future? And it's here that Earth observation can make a key contribution. Could you give me some examples of how Earth observation information can be used in these bank activities worldwide? Sure. And information here is the key word. What these banks need is readily usable information that they can integrate into their policy making, their planning, and their monitoring and evaluation procedures. And in Europe, we have a highly capable and very specialized industry that can produce a wide variety of information products and services based on Earth observation. We know this industry very well. ESA have been working with them for the last 15 years to develop products and information services for mainly European and mainly public sector users, some 400 user organizations. Now what we would like to do is take that capability and move it further afield outside of Europe and into new user communities operating in those fields. And that's where the international development banks come in. Now to do this, we have started 30 small demonstration activities where we are producing with European industry products and services designed to meet specific needs of specific bank projects. And these are projects with the World Bank, the European Investment Bank, and the United Nations International Fund for Agricultural Development. Now, I can't go through all 30, but what I'd like to do is just give two examples. And the first example is oil spill monitoring. Now, this is a service that has been developed through ESA and with ESA member states, some national member states, and it's fully operational with the European Maritime Safety Agency doing routine surveillance of European waters. What we did is we took this capability and applied it to the Western Indian Ocean and Mozambique Channel. 
And in five months of operations using mainly Envisat data, we tracked, identified and investigated 38 pollution incidents. And this is leading to a real change in the way oil tankers operate in the region. They now realize that even in these remote areas, they can be surveyed and monitored on a routine basis. The second example I'd like to give is high resolution urban mapping. Again, this is a service that was developed through ESA and is being used in Europe on a fully operational basis by the European Commission to update the mapping information of more than 300 major European cities. Again, we took this and we applied it to three cities of Mumbai, Delhi and Dakar to monitor the urban expansion and growth at three points in time over the last decade. Now this has raised a lot of interest in the World Bank and the team responsible for operations in East Asia and Pacific have decided to map a further 10 cities using their own finances. And in the longer term, this is where we want to get to. We want to show the international development banks the value of the information that's being delivered and get them to integrate it into their operations on a sustainable basis. Okay, so how do you see this sort of collaboration moving forward? How do you see the future? Well, the key development in the next few years in Europe is going to be global monitoring of the environment and security, or Copernicus system. This system will provide the basis for fully operational environmental services, and more importantly, ensure the long-term continuity of the data. And this point is crucial when approaching large user organizations and talking to them and persuading them to integrate this information into their operations on a long-term basis. Now, what we're doing with the banks at the moment is just scratching the surface. We need more time and more collaboration with them to explore the full potential and more importantly to give them the time necessary to feel comfortable with using this new source of information. But I'm confident that if we do this in the next five to ten years we would see earth observation information being used in large investments in the developing world on a sustainable basis and taking benefit from the European capabilities already demonstrated. All right, well, it's a pretty exciting thing to look forward to. <laughs> Thank you very much. Thank you so much for joining the show. It's a pleasure. And to our viewers, remember that to learn more about space and about our planet, you can visit our website at www.esa.int. And from the ESA Web TV studios, I'm Kelsey Brennan-Wessels.